co-creating. Welcome. So this is what we're doing today. Built-in table saw, built-in rotor table, onto a bench that extends from the polk bench and the saw and the short bench. And then over the right hand side there will be my dust and air filtration and all that's happening afterwards. But this now is what I'm going to start today. Looks nice. So the first thing I have to do here was obviously set out where I wanted my tools to be. I thought the router table would be handy on the left hand side, I can get at it from the two sides and the table saw then has the full width, it, it, it offers me everything. So I took some crude measurements marked on the ground, always done that, start getting my lengths of wood, start chopping them into bits, and all I'm doing here is building boxes. those lengths are set and fixed, you're just simply making your two rectangles. So these two rectangles are going to be two slightly different sizes. That will all kind of make sense afterwards, but the bottom one I wanted to put casters on because I wanted this to be able to move around as well. Sometimes it's actually really handy having another little pair of hands. Just to get a view. That works. Once you have that kind of where you want it to be, now you start measuring your heights. And again, at the more I'm building this workshop, the handier it is. The, the more I'm able to work around it, and it's just such an easy space to operate in. So I'm starting here with my router table. I want to get my height for that first. The router table is a bit taller than the table saw, so that will kind of determine where this horizontal plane is going to be. The table saw, you can always raise things up afterwards, you can always put it on, you can never really take it off again. So, get the rotor table set up, the way it is there, it's maybe 2-3 mil under the level of a poke, now I'm going to be building that up, I can always add it up. And once I figure out where that is, I can figure out where the back of it is, it's all snugly fitting in, it'll accept a 3 quarter inch sheet of ply on top, and bring it, everything up to the same level. So this is the back surface of the router table, what it'll be butting up against. And you want to get a 3 quarter inch sheet of ply in there, cut it nice and snug, and the router table will be sitting up on top of that. always put shims and stuff like that into it to raise it up a couple of mil here and there. Eventually it'll be just above the level of the polk. And just under the level of that sheet of ply that will be my finished surface on this bench. Give everything a little clean off and then it's time to start adding a bit of strength. So again just getting 4 by 2 cutting, bracing across more of these you put in, the stronger it's going to be. I don't mind it being heavy. Just screw, 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 plenty of strength. Now it's a beautiful day, but it's freezing. So, come in again. It's too cold out there. And I'm going to do I'm going to put a little press in here underneath the router table for all my rotor bits and all the accoutrements that come with a router table. Uh, so I'm building that inner lip like I did on the polk bench just to be able to put a little surface on there to have a little, little press. So just adding on bits and pieces as I need to. That'll all be boxed off. So, same as the bulk bench, it's time to start building up the sides now. I have the carcass, I have the frame of it done, the chassis of the bench is made. 
now it's just time to put on the panels. So again, one at a time, just mark, cut, glue, screw. Or tap. Again, just using construction glue and just one at a time getting each one of them done. This is going to be the back of the little press underneath the router table. And again, blue, tap, tap, tap. Again, the same as with the polk bench, that sheet of plywood is kind of floating, so got a bit of scrap wood, cut two little hoses out of it, screwing that into the frame, and then I'll tamp that from the back, and it's all strong now. Got some OSB, I think it was three quarter inch, just to sit in there, and a sheet of half inch ply for the bottom of the little press onto the router table. That's starting to take shape really is. And so it's time to start getting the table saw set now at this stage. So again I'm using three quarter inch OSB, kind of marking out where the legs are and I'll be cutting these little pieces out to fit in around each of those legs. That works. Great. Glue. Again, I'm going to be building up on top of this. The table saw is going to be sitting into a little cradle to rest it up to whatever finish level I want to have it at. In the same way as I did the bottom, now I'm just putting in the panels around the outside. Same way, cut them to height, mark, cut one at a time, put them on one at a time. Now where it's meeting the short bench, I'm just going to kind of again strengthen that up, get a piece of 4x2, get it in the right position, screw it, get a little rasp, clean it off, and in she goes. And the last few little bits and pieces now for strength. Now finally the surface. Now the way this is at at the moment, it is about a mil, mil and a half above the level of the poke. And just, again, that router table is going to be coming up just under the level of the surface there, the, the timber surface. So all that fine tweaking has to be done. And I suppose start with the hand planer and just, it's all fine tuning at this stage. Get everything to fit in snug and nice no rush. Once everything's fitting in nicely, I decided I'd put four screws, one in each corner, to kind of get its finished position, and then work the saw around that. Put the saw up from underneath, mark it off, and cut it out from there. But at least now I know that table surface can move. So table saw goes in, I fool around with it till I can get it just touching off the, to the, the underside of the surface, get a bit of moulding, Put it up against the saw once everything is in its finished place and then take off the surface mark out what you need to cut out and then cut it out now the reason i added on the bit of molding is because i'm actually going to put molding all around trim all around the inside of it ah it's my workshop so i'd like to do that So, once you've all that marked out and you've double checked it and triple checked it, then get out your saw, 
very slowly, very carefully, cut out those lines. Screws back in the same place. Get your saw, check it out. And I realized then that the two little wings, the two little cantilevered wings there, they're fairly unsteady, as you can see. There's very little support there. So I wanted to build up underneath that, give it a lot more strength. Again, grab a few off cuts of 2x4, loads of glue, loads of screws. And these little side pieces again are supporting the underside of that wing and they're extended out the same level as that 2x4 on the side so that I'll be putting a panel across the front of it to help to brace it. And they were cut out of just half inch ply, put a little semicircular design on them and they were acting like brackets holding up those two wings. So once they're glued, happy days, glue, tap tap tap. And you gotta kinda say then, for all intents and purposes, this stage of this is kind of done. That's it is what it's supposed to be now. Everything's in the right place and I sure I suppose there's only one thing left to do. Black. <laughs>